Good morning. Welcome to Waterville United Methodist Church on this Palm Sunday. It's great to see everyone that's here, especially as we consecrate this place for God's glory. I, I do have several announcements. Uh, one is uh, the kids, uh, right after Olga plays and we get ready to stand and sing our first hymn, if you'd go back and see uh, Miss Shelton, uh, you'll be coming in with your palm branches and laying them before the altar. So uh, she'll help you with that. So we give thanks. Uh, also, we have the schedule of things that are happening uh, for Holy Week. Uh, at 7 o'clock on Easter morning, there will be an Easter sunrise service. It's an ecumenical service uh, on the river. Uh, and then we're going to do a community open house on April the 23rd, and we're going to need help with that. So uh, just there's a sign-up sheet back by the coffee and the cookies. So here's the deal. You don't get a cookie unless you sign up on the sheet. Uh, so it, uh, we're really looking forward to introducing to the whole community uh, this place that, it, that was built with the vision of being a community resource, not just our church. And we give thanks for that vision. Uh, also, there... Uh, I've got one here. I can't read my writing. My writing's not as good, so I'm going to skip it. Or did someone, can someone tell me what it was? <laughs> oh, I guess not. So we give thanks and uh, we look forward now to bringing glory and honor to God as, as Olga plays.
Amen. Please be seated. Please join me in the call to worship and opening prayer. Break open our hearts this morning to hear your word, O God. Come and let us worship with great joy. Let God's will become strong in our lives. We come into your presence. words of healing and restoration. Bring us closer to you and enable us to discern your will for us that we may serve you more faithfully by serving others in need. In our name's name we pray. Amen. Amelia, we're looking forward to your special music. you. Amen. We're moving into the time that we're going to consecrate the building, and uh, I'd like to introduce our first speaker who's going to share some words, and then uh, our district superintendent, and then we'll do the consecration itself. So Reverend Linda Middleberg is with us today. She's the executive assistant to our bishop, Bishop Greg Palmer, and she comes to share a few words with us. Good morning, and thank you, Amelia. That was beautiful. 
Um, I come to bring you greetings this morning from our Bishop Gregory Palmer. He's sorry he can't be with you in person this morning. But I'm glad that he sent me because I was your district superintendent for about 15 months back in 2014. And I worshipped in your old building and saw the drawings for this building. And so I'm so excited to be able to worship here with you as you see the fruit of a dream that I know was you held for a long time. And so we're, I'm glad to be with you. And I give you thanks. I give God thanks this morning. I give thanks for every person who did anything to help this dream become a reality. Whether it was to give financially or to be on the building committee or, or you were here getting ready and, and helping to clean the restrooms to get ready today or whatever you've done to help today to happen. I give God thanks for you. And I give God thanks this morning for every person that you don't know yet that will walk in this building at some time in the future and meet Christ for the first time through you. And so I'm grateful to be here and I'm grateful to God for you and all that you are yet to achieve. Amen. And next is our present district superintendent, uh, Reverend Scott Oakey. Uh, Scott. Wow. I, I look at, out at this beautiful place of worship. And, and as Linda, I just give thanks to God for this. This is incredible. It is absolutely beautiful. What an incredible gift to God. I want you to know that I am so proud of your pastor, Reverend Mike Denman, and he has given all of himself in, in this, uh, using his administrative talents, his entrepreneurial spirit, and in leading all of you in this life-changing process. And what a gift he is leaving you in his retirement. And you, you have prayed you have persevered, you have sacrificed your precious time and, and the monies that you have worked so hard and you've given it to accomplish all of this. I am so proud of you. And I want you to know that I believe that this is a missional church. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is I don't believe this is a place where you just come and you sing your favorite song and, and you hear a good message and then leave the way that you came. No, I believe that this is a place where you will come, that you will hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, that your life will be transformed by the love of God, and you will walk out those glass doors in the back, and you will share the love of Jesus Christ with everyone that you meet. And so this is a mission to, to Waterville, to all of White House, to all of Maumee, to all of the surrounding area. I don't know if you know this statistic or not, but many people are saying that our communities today, many of them are 80% unchurched. Now, what does that mean? You go out to lunch after this today, you go to Walmart later on, and eight out of 10 people that you see or you pass in the aisle will not have been to a church on this most important day called Palm Sunday. And so we truly are a minority in this world. We, we live in what many people are referring to as a post-Christian age, meaning a great majority of our culture has moved beyond believing Christianity is an important belief to practice. But at the same time, we live in an apostolic age. An age like the original disciples of Jesus lived in during the first century. They were certainly a minority, threatened by hostile religious leaders and invading armies, and yet they persevered. Do you remember their story in the book of Acts? They shared the gospel. They preached the good news in the marketplaces. Some stood on, on the street corners and shared the love of, of Jesus Christ. 
They pooled their money. They gave it to the poor. They clothed those those in need. They invited people into their homes. They fed them. They shared their very possessions with people that they had never met before. And why did they do so? So those other people could know the unconditional love of Jesus Christ. I want you to know that that I believe that you have built this magnificent facility not for yourselves, but for those outside the church walls and outside of the faith. Children, young adults, older people who may meet their maker before most of us, but those 80% need to know the life-saving message of Jesus Christ. Now, you remember that old church that you left just a couple of weeks ago to come here? Someone else built that church for you in the hopes that you would come to know the love of Jesus Christ. And so some will come out of curiosity. Some will come because of all the activity that has been happening in this area over the past year. Others because of your advertising. And if you are here for the first time today, I am so glad. I am so glad that you are here, and I pray that you will come back and you will invite your many friends to come and be a part of this. I know that you will receive great hospitality, a good message about the gospel, and you will feel a part of all of this. And for you long-time Waterville United Methodist members, you invite your friends your neighbors, your co-workers, your golf and bowling buddies, those you meet for coffee at McDonald's, the person who bags your groceries at Kroger, the kids' soccer or, or baseball coach, pray for them and invite them. A genuine invitation is still and always will be the most fruitful way people will come to church. If you only built this place for yourselves, You built it way too big, and you spent way too much money. But I believe that this is a place where your love for Jesus will flow out of those glass doors in the back and across the parking lot and across the field and and to the neighbors behind this church and across the road to all that building that is going on and that the Holy Spirit will touch the lives all around. Field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. Wasn't that a great movie? But it hardly ever happens. If you pray and invite, they will come. Because you will be partnering with the Holy Spirit to touch the lives of hundreds of people, giving them hope, giving them purpose, giving them support, giving them friendship giving them Jesus. I truly believe that in three years, you can be 500 people in your average worship attendance. You will become one of the largest churches in this district and one of the largest churches in our conference. And it's all because you reach out to others and share with them the love of Jesus Christ. May it be so. May it be so. Amen. Thank you, Linda and Scott, for your words, uh, the greeting from the bishop, and and your encouraging words. Uh, I I think I just got out of preaching a sermon after that. So thank you. Uh, okay. I present our New Beginnings building to be consecrated for the worship of God and the service of all people. Dear friends, rejoice that God so moved the hearts of people that this house has been built for praise and prayer. Let us now consecrate it for service and celebrate its holy use. Will you pray with me? O eternal God, mighty in power and of incomprehensible majesty, whom the heavens cannot contain, much less the walls of a temple, 
made with your hands. You have promised your special presence whenever two or more are assembled in your name to offer praise in prayer by the power of your Holy Spirit. May we now consecrate this house of your worship. Amen. Lord, bless us and sanctify what we do here, that this place may be holy for us and a house of prayer for all people. Guide and empower in this place by the Holy Spirit, the proclamation of your word and the celebration of your sacraments, the pouring out of prayer and the singing of your praise, professions of faith and testimonies of your grace, the joining of men and women in marriage and the celebration of death and resurrection. Save us from that failure of vision which would confine our worship within these walls, but send us out from here to be your servants in the world, sharing the blessings of Christ with the world he came to redeem. Now, O oh God, sanctify this place, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the dominion, and you are exalted as head above all. Amen. Linda and Scott, thank you for being here. And I, I failed to introduce their spouses. Uh, Paul is Linda's husband. He's sitting down here, and Mary is uh, Scott's wife. And thank you both. Thank you all for being here. Uh, what a privilege. Uh, I'm going to invite the children up, but I, I have an announcement. I finally figured out what I wrote down that I couldn't read. We're, we're doing, because of the, the property the way it is, we're doing the Easter egg hunt after worship today all over our building. So take this with the intent that it means, after worship, get out. <laughs> Don't leave the building. Just go to the back so we can use ha at least half, if not more, of the sanctuary with the classrooms and every place else. So the kids have to look for Easter eggs and realize that every place is open to them. It just continues the vision that this is for everyone and not just for us. So uh, we give thanks for that. So if the kids would come up. That was a good question. Are we kicking the kids out? No. We're, the adults are all going to go to the back and have fellowship with one another, so you all can hunt Easter eggs every place in the building, except for the storage room in the kitchen, or wherever you're told by those that are leading it, okay? And we may need to recruit a few of you to help hide eggs. So uh, Brian would really appreciate that. So if you're going to help hide, Brian, uh, go to him for direction. So this morning, we call this Palm Sunday. Do you know why we brought palms up, why you brought them in during the hymn? Yes. Exactly. Owen, did you have something more you wanted to say? Okay. Yeah, exactly. And it was Jerusalem. He was coming into Jerusalem. Uh, there was a crowd that gathered as he was coming in, and they laid palms and even their coats down because it was a way of showing honor to Jesus. They had great expectations of what was going to happen this week. And so this is a way that we start Holy Week with all the different ways we remember and we are reminded of God's love for us through his son Jesus. So we have we have today Palm Sunday, then Monday Thursday, we're going to be here for a meal and celebrate Holy Communion. And then uh, Easter Sunday, we'll have our celebration here and for anybody that wants to, uh, for the service down along the river at seven. So this is the beginning. God is throughout scripture has given us reminders so we could remember what he did for us in his son. So Jesus came that we could gather together 
we would know him, and by knowing Jesus, we get to know God. And so God loves us. God loves you. Don't forget the potluck. Oh, I'm sorry. I heard that in the background. So, <laughs> yeah, on, on Thursday night, we're having a potluck. So anyway, good food. So sorry I get distracted sometimes. That was one of them. Do you ever get distracted? Yeah, okay. I get distracted on my TV. On your TV. <laughs> so, so we give thanks for all the ways that God has provided for us to remember what God did for us in Jesus. So don't ever forget how much God loves you. And as you grow and as you learn more of the stories of God through Scripture, you'll find that there's many ways to remember God's love. And we give thanks for it. Let me pray with you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the ways that you've given us to remember how much you love us how much you love our children, how much you love each of us that are here this morning, and, and especially how much you love all those that aren't in church anywhere because they don't know Jesus. So, Lord, we pray for them this morning as we pray for ourselves. And as I pray for your protection over, the, over our children, that your Holy Spirit would teach and guide them, and they would come to know you. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you can go ahead. Go to, to Sunday school. Go ahead and read. Do I just start? After telling this story, Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As he came to the towns of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying that cult? Just say, the Lord needs it. So they went and found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked him, Why are you untying that colt? And the disciples simply replied, The Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, If they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers.
give thanks. Please stand. Amen. Please be seated. That's okay. I haven't been reading it very well anyway. As we come to our prayer time, we again lift up uh, Olga's family and our administrative assistance uh, family who are all in Ukraine. Uh, Olga's family is all in Odessa and the surrounding area. So uh, let's continue to pray for peace uh, in this crazy war that's going on and uh, that uh, God would intervene and bring peace. Uh, also lift up all those that are that are printed in the bulletin and lift up the LaRue family with Doug's passing. And uh, so we pray for Karen and Robin and, and their families uh, asking for God's peace. So let us turn to the Lord in this time of prayer. Gracious and holy God, 
we know that you are here with us, that your Holy Spirit is moving among us, and we give you praise. Lord, you know all the, the, the concerns. You know the truth of every uh, prayer concern that's listed in our bulletin. You know every need. And we ask that you would touch those needs first with a, so that each person has a sense of your presence. They know that you're with them. And then our prayer is that you would heal, that you would set free, that you would bring peace, that you would give wisdom to each and every one. Lord, this is a, a glorious day as we celebrate those folks that greeted Jesus in Jerusalem. And Lord, we ask that you use this, this time to remind us of your love and your grace. And Lord, we continue to pray as Jesus taught, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Have you ever thought about the reality that, that God needs you? We all think about how God, how we need God. But God has chosen the church to be those in his service in this world to accomplish God's purpose, God's grace. And he calls us to serve in that way. So we have this, this image of Palm Sunday where the people were, uh, were expecting Jesus to come into Jerusalem and change everything. So one of the things that gets in all of our way in relationships, uh, even our relationship with God, are unfulfilled expectations. You ever think about it? The, the greatest conflicts that we ever deal with is because we violated someone's expectation. Jesus even violated the expectations of the people that ushered him in as a conquering hero, believing that he was finally going to accomplish what no one else could have, and that is to displace Rome from Israel. He was going to be the king that was going to set them free. So later on, many abandoned him because he didn't fulfill that expectation. In fact, in just a few days, he was nailed to the cross. So I want to deal with, with this a little bit as we strive to become closer to God through Jesus Christ, as we allow the Holy Spirit to teach us and guide us. What expectations do we have of God that have gone unfulfilled? And how did we react to that? Well, in some of my experiences, one of the ways that we react to that is, as people often react to unfulfilled expectations, there's a level of anger, isn't there? We say, God, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you make this happen? Why didn't you save my loved one? Why didn't you heal in an extraordinary way? Why didn't you prevent me from losing my job? Why did you allow COVID to ravish the world? Don't we always expect God to step in? Isn't that our expectation? That God is so big and he's going to come in and fix everything. Yet, as we study the word, as we look at Holy Week, we realize that God does things so different than we can even imagine that sometimes we have expectations that will never be reality. It'll never come to pass the way that we might want it to. 
And here's the good news. When we learn to depend upon God, our expectations will change. And we'll realize that God needs us to be faithful disciples, to minister and serve one another, to serve our community, to reach out and meet the needs of the poor, the hungry, more importantly, the poor in faith, and the, those that hunger for peace that will only find it in Jesus Christ. So let us consider this, that one of our greatest ministries as individuals is leading another person into the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. So let's go back to the Palm Sunday story. So the first part of the story, and, and I'd love to know how this took place, other than I know the Holy Spirit was at work. Uh, Jesus is getting ready to come into Jerusalem. He sends two disciples ahead and say, you're gonna, as you get into town, you're going to find a colt tied up. Go get it, untie it, bring it back. And he said, if someone asks why you're doing it, just tell them the Lord needs it. Now, I'd love to know the background of that story. Had Jesus already made the arrangements? Was this already a disciple? And was this a, a way of teaching the disciples that Jesus was, uh, was already in, in power through the Holy Spirit and that what was about to happen was for everybody's benefit? Because the person didn't argue. Now, if we didn't know any better, if it was your cult... And a donkey in Jesus' day was a privilege. Most people couldn't afford to own one. Not only was it a donkey, but it was a colt. It was a young one. It was extremely valuable. Now, if we had something extremely valuable tied up, we didn't want any to get it away, and someone comes and unties it, how would we react? Yeah, we'd react, wouldn't we? Leave that thing alone. That's mine. Don't touch that, Colt. But then we see the truth. The Lord needs it. That's all that needed to be said. The same is true for us. The Lord needs us. Needs us to be faithful in ministering with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Needs us to celebrate not Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem, but Christ's triumphal entry into our hearts. And as the Holy Spirit comes upon us, it transfer, transforms the way we think, the way we, the way we feel, the, way that we, the very way we approach life is transformed and is shifted because we've let Jesus in and we experience that tremendous gift of grace when our hearts are transformed and the most important thing in our lives is our relationship with God. So I'd like to challenge us here a little bit. Not like that isn't a regular thing. How many of us have given our entire lives to God? And I would say we would all have on a continuum a different answer. And that's okay. Because part of the sanctification for each of us is growing from wherever we are right now to where God wants us to be. And we don't have a timetable for that. Just like when we start praying about something and we, we want it now, we don't realize God's timetable. It, uh, it's not according to our design or our, our desire. And I, a couple weeks ago I shared this. I'll repeat it. God will meet our needs at our very last moment. You ever think of it that way? Is because we don't have the need anymore because God met it. 
There's a, a story that I ran across where people were talking about looking for something that was lost. You know, the last place we look is where we find it. <laughs> Think about it. We quit looking when we find it. The same is true with our relationship with God. When we're looking for God's presence in our lives, the last thing that we do is we finally relinquish our control that God can take over and bless us and honor us and use us to meet the needs of the world. And it all starts with the spiritual relationship. So these people that were laying down their coats and laying down the palms and, and Jesus was coming in, they were thrilled. They were so excited. They were exuberant. This was a phenomenal day. Jesus has finally come to Jerusalem. Now, a little bit of backstory. He'd stopped going to Jerusalem for a while because he knew that he was going to be arrested he knew he would have to die on the cross, and he knew God's timing. So he stayed away until it was God's time to move in the midst of the people. And even those, I believe, many of those that laid down their coats and the palms later on that week because they didn't understand what was happening, gave up. When Jesus went to the cross, it's all over. What we want isn't going to happen. I also believe the Holy Spirit moved in such a way and they, many could have been brought back to that desire to serve God through Jesus Christ. But it was a struggle. Even for those that were closest to Jesus, it was a struggle. They didn't understand it all. And, it, and it, the reality is this. In our human condition, many of us don't understand exactly what God wants. And unfortunately, when we don't understand, sometimes we don't do anything. And my experience is when we take the first step, God starts to reveal and give us understanding. It doesn't start there, though. It's kind of like this building. How many years ago was the dream first hatched? Does anybody know? Jim? Yeah, something around 27 years. Can you believe that? The first group started meeting 27 years ago. And now we're here. God moved in our midst. And it all started with a great big pile of dirt that we were offered and never got. They had to take back the offer. But the contractor working on that job found dirt for us. And just to keep the dirt story going, we had so much left over that they were able to raise the backfield a foot. And now it's, it's graded for perfect drainage so when we finally get grass back there, it'll be a resource for so many things. We already have the possibility of rugby playing back there. We have the possibility of lacrosse being practiced. We have all kinds of opportunities. And because of the foresight of so many, we even have a way to let people in the building just by programming a card or a key fob. So if they need to use the restrooms or whatever, when they're playing back there, someone will be in charge of the key. That's our dream. That's our triumphal entry. When this place is filled up during the week because people are using it. Phenomenal thing. It's our entry into our community. And it'll happen in God's time and God's way. And it'll happen because we are willing to be obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit each step of those that way. So God needs each and every one of us to do our part to honor and bring glory to him.
And here's the promise we can depend upon. If God asks, he'll provide. And he'll lead us by the Holy Spirit. We don't have to have all the answers. We simply need to take the first step so that the Holy Spirit can guide every step after it. And every person here this morning and those that are watching the live stream or will watch the service later, God has a way for you to contribute to his glory in Waterville and the surrounding areas. And it's all because Jesus at the right moment was willing to go to Jerusalem and then was arrested, beaten horrendously, nailed to the cross, and rose again. That we might be here this morning, that we would know God's love and God's power. And for that, we must give thanks. So never forget, God needs you because we are the hands and the feet of Jesus. Amen. Please stand. And let us go out into our world, into our community, with the grace and the love of God in all that we do. Amen and amen. And now let's go out to the foyer, the kitchen, wherever, so the kids can look, hunt for Easter eggs. Amen. <laughs>
I scramble a meeting. 